I keep on saying I'm gonna do like regular lives and um, I just, I never do. So I actually, my, my key today to being on here is that I told people that I was gonna do a live to hold myself accountable. So today I wanted to talk about the baby puffs. And so on our stories, um, we've been posting about that lately. And then um, just last night we posted um, a, an actual Instagram po post on it. And so I've gotten a lot of messages um, just with lots of questions and you know, questions about brands and questions about puffs in general. And so I've told those people I'm going to do a live to hold myself accountable. So here I am. I hope to do more of these in the future too, just like pop on pretty regularly. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so why baby puffs? Because I think when we say puffs, we're just talking about like processed foods in general. But I think puffs, um, you know, when we walk down the baby aisle, there's like a whole, the whole aisle on the one side is baby puffs. So I think it's one of the first processed foods that we give, um, hi guys, that we give our kids. And, um, but it can be extended into like all processed foods. So let's talk about that. Um, the puffs, you know, I think you can give them as early as like four months and uh, definitely like six months. Um, but I first want to say that I'm not here to like shame or judge you for giving your babies puffs. So let's first talk about that because I would say like 90% of moms give these to their kids. My sister does and I love my sister. She's an amazing mom. Um, so I'm not here to you know, say you're doing something wrong. I'm just here to maybe challenge the way that you think about puffs and maybe you start to look at them in a different way. But So why do people give puffs? I think there's two big reasons. I think one of the, I think probably the biggest reason is because when you look at the packaging, it like screams at us that I'm healthy for your kid, give, give me to your child. You know, when you look at the, like the marketing on the front, you see, um, you know, whole grain, heart healthy, or maybe you see grain free, organic. It's, you know, filled with all these different vegetables and fruits. Um, you know, some have probiotics in them. Um, you know, the name itself, like some are like happy organic baby or serenity. So, and, and actually the one I posted the other day, it was like, pediatrician and nutrition de nutritionist developed. So, you know, who doesn't, who, who doesn't like, you know, if your doctor developed this for your kid, there must be a reason, right? So I think everything on the Puffs marketing screams, give me to your kid. And I think as moms and as caregivers in general, we're just trying to do what's best for our kids. And I feel like the intention is definitely there. Like this is good and I'm gonna give it to them. I wanna get more fruits and veggies in them or probiotics. Okay, let me move on. Um, the, the other reason, so that the other reason I think is convenience, right? We're all so, I mean, we have like a million things on our plate it's crazy hectic and the puffs are like so convenient. You can, I, I feel like if we were to pull like the diaper bags across the US, we'd find puffs in like 90% of the diapers in the diaper bags. It'd be like your diapers, your wipes, you know, maybe a bottle and, and the puffs. So um, they're convenient. You can take them on the go, give them to your kid in the car, um, you know, give them in between meals. And I definitely, definitely wanna to touch on that because this is something that I'm trying to be more mindful of. And so I want to um, talk about like just giving the kids puffs outside of the meal time. So we're gonna to get to that, um, but they're convenient and I get it, I hear you, mom. I, I, for me, it's raisins. And this is something that like, I'm, I also am like, why am I doing this? Um, I just sometimes like our third, is so, um, she's a high needs baby. We thought the third would be easy, she's not. And there are just like days when it's me and her and she's just like, you know, just screaming for all of my attention and just like, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna give you some raisins. And then she happily like eats the raisins and is fine. And I'm like, what did I just do? She's not even hungry, I'm just giving her food. So I definitely wanna talk about that because I'm guilty as well. It's something that I'm really like trying to work on. Um, so 
So the marketing tells us they're good. They're super, super convenient. And who doesn't love convenience? And then I think the third is that like, all the moms are doing it. You know, even before you have kids, it's like you kind of just learn like, I'm gonna have kids and I'm gonna get puffs. Like, I feel like, I don't know, if I looked at baby registries nowadays, they would probably be on a baby registry. And so, you know, as parents, especially your first, you're like, what am I doing? And so you just kind of tend to follow what other moms do and everybody gives the puff. So it's just like, my baby gets to a certain age and they're gonna have the puffs. So I think those are three like super real justifiable reasons uh, to give your baby's puffs. So I'm not judging, again, just here to challenge the way you're thinking about them. So with regards to the first, which is <sighs> convenience, um, here's what I think about. I think about like coming up and your kids growing up and there's there's lots of, I mean, let's just be real. There's lots of like disordered eating out there. And I'm super mindful of that. I grew up, um, you know, with a couple of really close friends that had eating disorders. Uh, one of my close colleagues, when I started my first job, uh, had an eating disorder. Uh, one of my good friends who's on the team here, um, you know, struggled with an eating disorder for 10 years. So I just, I'm always so mindful of that. I, with, with two daughters and, and now two stepdaughters as well that are 13, it's like, I'm constantly thinking about that. How do I create a healthy relationship um, around food? Or how do I model that for them? How do I help them like come into that? And so I think about, um, you know, a lot of people sometimes push back and they're like, you know, when you're teaching a kid to read ingredients and you're like, artificial colors are bad to put into your body, you know, that's, that, that's not the best way to do it. I kind of disagree, actually, and I spent a lot of time thinking about this. I think kids are way smarter than we give them credit for and to um, teach them, you know, the consequences of putting certain things in our body, I think that's actually fine um, to say, okay, this food has artificial colors when we eat this food. And whether you're, you know, spiritual, whether you believe in God, you know, maybe you even frame it around that way. You know, our bodies were created to eat whole real foods or, you know, God designed us to eat um, real foods and this isn't a real food. Maybe you frame it around that way or even something like, you know, when you eat this, you may get a tummy ache or you may feel a little bit out of control of your body. And it may be right now in the moment, right after you eat it, it may show up, you know, the next day. And just kind of teaching them to just tune into their bodies, I think is actually a really good thing. And I don't think we're doing any harm there. Um, what I think may create relationships with food that aren't ideal, I think having like a parent, like I grew up and my mom always had the scale and was like always weighing herself and looking at herself in the mirror and like looking at her stomach. And it was just what I started to see. I don't think that's helpful at all. Um, we don't have a scale in the house. And like, you know, I, I told that to the start with Tark. I'm like, we're not gonna have a scale in the house. I don't want that. I just don't want the kids to be around that. Um, but I think getting back to the point here is that with these puffs, I don't know you know, if people are necessarily serving them as meals, maybe it's like part of your breakfast, but I think a lot of times they get used in between meals if 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 the little one is like just bored or cranky or, you know, whatever. It's like sometimes we just are really quick to like, here's a snack. Or if we're in the car, you know, like we have the puffs. And even if before they get cranky, you know, it's like, here's the puffs. Um, at a restaurant, on the go. So I think what happens, and we don't even realize it, is that at an early age, like we're just teaching the kid that when they're bored or when they're in the car or when they're just feeling a little uncomfortable, like eat. And I think that starts to just become a part of you. And then it like, you know, it, it transitions into just, it, it becomes a part of you, especially as you get older. So I always think about that with puffs. And I think that's something that I'm super mindful of, of just like when I'm giving food. So here we don't do a ton of snacks. Um, I try to like 
stick to the three meals and they come nice and hungry to each meal. Um, but we do do, so every once in a while we do them, you know, like after school, before soccer, I'll give, um, I'll give like, I usually have like these paleo Valley beef sticks with me and a piece of fruit or something like that. Um, so don't get me wrong. Uh, I will give snacks when I think it's appropriate. And you heard me say earlier that sometimes I'm like, here's a bowl of raisins to just keep our little one quiet. Um, but I think, I really think about that and I don't think that is, that's helpful. And I think that that's, um, contributing to, uh, to, to, to the way that we look at food when we're older. I think also, you know, speaking of like in the car, I think kids are supposed to be bored. And I think a lot of good comes from boredom in kids. And so like the ours learned really early on that like, you're in the car and especially like short distances. So if we're traveling, we pack food and we, we do what we have to do to get us through the, the, the two, three, four hour drive. But if it's like 30 minutes, an hour or less, you know, um, you're bored. Like you're just sitting there and they learn really quickly to just like look out the window. And sometimes, and we do music. I feel like music is a huge help in the car. Um, but I think, you know, a lot of times it's just like, look out the window. And so my daughter, especially Mira, she's almost five now. And she just sometimes will just, she can just sit in the car and just look out the window. And it's like, I sometimes wonder, I'm like, is she like just zoned out? But I'm telling you, there's like, there's so much going on in there. And she'll be quiet and just kind of lost in thought for a long time. And then all of a sudden she'll say something and I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. And it just, it was that boredom, boredom that allowed her to kind of come to that thought. So I think, you know, in the car, when we're using these puffs, we're kind of destroying that too. Um, I think that's all I want to say. I'm going to stop it because there's lots of comments coming in and... So I just want to make sure that I get these comments answered too as we like continue the discussion. But I think for so puffs, one of the one of the things with puffs, or again any really processed food or snack, um, used when you're not hungry, isn't great, right? Um, okay, so I have serenity on the bad list. So I'm gonna get to all of that. Stepdaughter is the hardest. I'm so like fortunate, my stepdaughters are incredible. They are just, they're such wonderful human beings. They're 13, they're twins. And they, um, gosh, they just like, they're just so good with my kids. I feel like it's such a gift. And it's so funny because Neam was always the oldest for so long. And now he has like older brothers and sisters and they, you know, play sports with them and bake with them and draw with them and just like, just there, like they just, it's, it's just another person to show up and be with them. I'm so grateful, but but I hear you. I mean, that was a big risk when Tark and I came together. Um, and it probably might've been a breaker if if like the kids, if there wasn't synergy. I mean, I don't know, but that, that, that would be hard and I empathize with you. Um, let's see. My mother-in-law gives it to my baby. I hate it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's, um, like people, oh my gosh, I might want to just share this story. I didn't think I was going to be like so long on this, but I feel like you have to draw the line. Like this is your baby and no means no. And even if it means like, um, you know, just a, even if it means like really uncomfortableness in the short term, I feel like it could be okay in the long term because, or at least like in the end, they'll respect what you're going to say. Uh, I remember when Neam was little, I don't even know how old he was, but maybe like, I don't know, 10 months or so. And we're at this family function and, um, and I, so I'm over, I'm on one side of the room and my stepmom, who I love, and she has come to really respect like what, how I raise my kids and what I give them. And to the point now where she's like, is this okay to put in their Easter basket? And I'm like, God, she's just amazing. But, um, we're at this function and I'm on one side of the room and she's on the other and she's holding Neum and I'm in this conversation and I look over and she's like about to put blue ice cream in his mouth. And I just like, I look back and I like picture like some like weird, like I picture a scene out of a movie of me like a cheetah, like jumping over the tables and like grabbing him. It didn't obviously happen that way, but it was, 
kind of similar in that like I, I, I stopped my conversation immediately. I ran over to the point where like, I feel like everyone in the room was like, what's going on? Like what's going on? And I just like grabbed him out of her hand, like don't put that in. And it's extreme, right? I'm just, I'm sharing it because I can laugh at it now. It's, it's extreme, but I think you have to sometimes be that extreme to get a point across. And um, short term, like her feelings were very hurt. She felt embarrassed. We spent some time like talking through it. Um, I apologize. I think I could have handled it in a different way. And now it's like, we, we, it's just stronger. So in regards to your mother-in-law, that was a big tangent that I got off on too. I've been doing these tangents a lot lately. I think it's just, I have so much uh, on my plate that I'm just so scatterbrained. So I actually, before I got on, if you see me looking this way, I like put to, I took like five minutes and just kind of put together like this, like outline of what I want to talk about in case I get on these tangents. And then I was like, wait, what am I talking about? Um, so if I'm glancing, that's what I'm doing. Um, and here I am, wait, what was I talking about? The mother-in-law. So I think you have to be extreme. I, I think, you know, but extreme initially, I think in the first two years, like totally extreme. And then it's just this realization that the outside world happens and they're going to get exposed to a lot of stuff outside. And um, for me, you know, I'm divorced and the kids, Neem and Mira are with their dad sometimes. And I know that it's not like clean, clean, healthy food all the time over there. And, um, I've accepted that and I control what I can control. Otherwise I'm going to go nuts. I'm going to go nuts. I'm going to create like a really awful relationship trying to control him and, um, same thing with schools. I hear that a lot. Like, how do you control what's given to your kid at schools? I think you do the best you can, um, but then realize that it's, some of it's going to be out of your control and maybe, maybe that's okay. Um, you know, there is something to be said, I think about like, you know, you control what you have in a house and then your friends are, you, you know, your kids go over to a friend's house and they eat like four bowls of ice cream and they feel sick for the next day. Like that's, that's kind of great because they're learning like, oh, if I eat all this, then this is what happens to my body and likely they're not going to do it again. So also kind of giving them a little bit of space to learn on their own, I think is helpful. Um, maybe they do that. Maybe they don't. Maybe it's like they eat four bowls of ice cream. It's like, that was so good. I can't wait to go back to my friend's house. You know, and in that case, um, I don't know. I don't know. Mine's seven, so he's not really like going over to his friends like a ton right now without like adults over there. So that's something I'm going to have to think about. Um, okay, so let's see. We talked about uh, stuff she can't resist. Yes, I love this. Um, plus hand things. She's giving it, she's giving some really good advice. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to move on. She knows I don't really like. Okay, I think that's just like a conversation going on inside there. So that's great. Get it, guys. Um, all right, so we talked about puffs and when we're giving puffs and giving them outside of um, outside of, of the meals. There's, a, there's actually like one other point I want to make about that because I've read a lot about this and um, I think it's worth sharing so that it's on here. And again, you know, take it or leave it. This I, I read a lot. Um, I apply a lot in my own house. I've learned a lot. And so when I share things, it's just one of those things where like, you know, you decide if you want to take it or not. Um, I think we've become the society of snackers. I'm going to actually get off point a little bit here and then I'm going to bring it back. But I think this is an important point to make. I think we've become a society of snackers. What I've read um, by a physician that I really respect. And so I think... I'm actually going to get off tangent a little bit more and just talk about like the hier the hierarchy in my mind of physicians. So if I were to have some sort of ailment, the first person I would see is a functional medicine physician. Um, I think that food is ultimately the real medicine. We talk about that a lot, but I think they get this concept and they're not quick to like put a band-aid medicine on you and rather like help you figure out what's going on. I do think they give a ton of supplements. Um, which Tark and I talk about a lot and he's just like, he's not a big, big supplement person. Uh, but if I, if I have an ailment, I'm going to go see a functional medicine doctor. And actually Tarek, what I love about him is while he's a surgeon, he's also trained in functional medicine, which is really cool. Um, 
But I would say above a functional medicine doctor is a physician that understands functional medicine, understands the power of food and knows that that is the real medicine. But then they've like taken a little bit further and they've studied like the biochemistry in the body. So they're like down this rabbit hole and two people stand out and there is a point to this, uh, actually two with this. So um, one that I love, her name is Dr. Kate Shanahan and she was like a biology major before, she's an MD but she's really studied the body systems. And so she, in my opinion, is like the expert on seed oils. And um, one of the things with the puffs is that there's like a lot of seed oils. Even if it says like organic sunflower oil, it's still a seed oil, it's still a seed oil. Um, so she's done a lot of work with seed oils and what she says, and, and, and I really believe it to be true because she's actually like at a, at a cellular level studying this stuff every day. Uh, and what she says is that we are now eating so many seed oils and the seed oils are what's high in the polyunsaturated fat. So it's different than mono, monounsaturated fat and saturated fat. And I don't I feel like I'm always talking about this. So I'm, I promise you, I'm not going to get down this tangent too much. You could check like other lives and posts. And I talk a lot about this. Um, so she, what she talks about is that these seed oils, you know, there's been such a rise since like, I think the seventies and now they're in all of our food. So prior to that, we, our fat source came from saturated fats, like uh, animals and butter, uh, obviously animals, coconut. <sighs> um, and that fat burns so clean. Like it's just like instant energy and uh, same with monounsaturated fat. Um, you know, like avocados and olive oil, that fat burns really clean in our body and our body, our cells are just like using it to burn fat. The difference with the polyunsaturated fat, and that's sometimes confusing because that's the omega-6 and omega-3 and we're all told like, omega-3 is so great. It is, we just don't need a lot of it. Um, and we don't need it processed, which is what these seed oils are. And um, so, it's like shifted to where the majority of fat used to be the saturated monounsaturated fat and it was just like clean energy. That's why when you look back at old pictures, like you just see a bunch of skinny people <laughs> walking around, right? But now that we're consuming about, and I think she even quotes like 80% of the fat comes from these polyunsaturated fats, mostly in the form of this processed seed oil, that doesn't burn clean. It doesn't burn clean in our bodies and rather it gets stored as fat. And then, the, and then even worse, what happens is because it doesn't give us energy and that's the majority of our fat and we're kind of, we want that as energy, same with glucose, but like when we're just talking specific to fat, we want that as energy and um, it doesn't give us energy. So then what do we do? We're like, well, we need energy. So we just snack more. And so it's just like this vicious cycle where you know the seed oils because they don't give us energy then we go and we like are like we need like glucose we need sugar to just snack on and for energy and so what we've seen is that you know you've be become the society of like we're constantly snacking grazing and we still don't have a lot of energy we're like we don't have energy so with regards to these puffs um oh my god and i just got off track again okay so with regards to these puffs they contain these seed oils and um, and so we're giving, like that's what we're giving our kids from a really young age and I think it's dangerous. I think that's all I'm gonna say. So um, I think we've become the society of snackers. I think the puffs are contributing to it because we just give them as snacks. And then the long term is that from a really early age, our littles are just getting lots of seed oils and it's, you know, their fat composition is changing early on. And then unless you cut them out, it's just that trajectory. You're just gonna, like, that's what's gonna happen. It's the majority of your fat in your body is gonna be from these PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids. <sighs> that's a lot. Okay, so I think that's the first reason that I don't like puffs. I don't like puffs. Um, and processed foods in general, you know? So even like, there's some brands out there that I like, I just got a question this morning about Lesser Evil. And we say, we talk about that brand a lot. Um, I like it, 
I I'm familiar with their popcorn. And I think it's fun like to like put popcorn in your kid's lunch every once in a while. I don't eat it. I'm just, I don't like corn, but, um, but my kids love it. And so that's the cleanest popcorn I found. I love that they use coconut oil, um, organic. I think they use organic raw coconut oil. So like the highest of the highest quality. And then they use the Himalayan pink salt instead of just like crappy table salt. Um, so, and, and they're like, that's it. That's their ingredient. So the, the lesser evil brand, I give them, I, I, lo I love what they're doing in regards to the popcorn. I feel like it's least, least processed and it has high quality ingredients. But I got a question about, they have like little puffs. And so I just got on and I looked at their ingredients and you know, it's tricky because on the front they say made with coconut oil, but then you flip it around and you'll see buried down in the ingredient list is I think it's sunflower, organic sunflower oil. I'm like, no, no, it's in there. Um, and so, you know, every once in a while, I think what I, sh but what my response back was, um, we, we can't be perfect. We can't cut these seed oils out entirely. And I think to like have that all or nothing mentality, that in and of itself is gonna be harmful for kids. We, we don't wanna scare them. Um, but I think like try to like, 90% of the time eliminate these oils. And so if it's something you're giving your kid every once in a while, I mean, I don't, I really am like, I, I would probably do it too. I would do it, not even probably, I would do it. Um, but if it's something that they're eating every single day, that starts to accumulate in our body. And according to Dr. Shanahan, it starts to change our fat composition and that's what I'm concerned about. Um, so, that's the first reason I don't love puffs. Now the second reason, I'm gonna take a drink of water because my mouth is getting dry, I'm like talking so much. I'll get to these comments too. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna address this now. In, so this is for, especially like first time mamas if you're pregnant, um, or just in general, I guess. I have gotten so many comments from moms that have older kids that have told me, I swear, they're like, I wish I never would have given my kids the puffs. It's like, it's ruined their eating. <laughs> you know, ruins a strong word, but it's been like that. I've gotten those comments. It's like, ruined their eating now. So, you know, if that's a little bit of motivation too, it's like, th this is my hypothesis, but it's nice to see that like, mom's actually sharing, like, I wish I never would have started my kids on the puffs. Um, so for what that's worth, that comment kind of made me think about that. So the second reason, I think this is a really, really, really important point to make. And going back to like, okay, there's the functional medicine doctors that so much respect for those guys. And then above that, in my opinion, are the doctors that are understand the functional medicine comment or con, uh, what am I looking for? Understand like functional medicine in general. They know food is a real medicine, but then they've taken a little bit further in their research. And the other person that comes to mind is Dr. Robert Lustig. And so he, um, man, he's, he's a smart, smart guy. And he just wrote a book, I think it came out last year or early this year, but I think it was last end of last year, I think. He wrote a book called Metabolical and it's like, it's a, you know, it's a big read and it's a tough read, but let me just sum up like a couple of points that he made that I think are awesome. Actually just one point that he makes in there consistently. And that is, it's not what's in the food. It's what's been done to the food. So that leads me to the second point of the puffs is that, you know, on the bottle, they can say all that they want to say developed by a pediatrician and nutritionist full of all these vitamins and probiotics and veggies. And that's great. But the reality is, is that, so you're gonna take like a spinach and a kale and um, a pea. No, actually let's say like a spinach, kale, I don't know, and a banana or something. And you're going to get all that stuff into this like little puff. And so it's like, okay, so you have to really, really process, and plus like everything else you're putting in there. You have to really process that thing to get it into a puff. And then you have to wonder, after all that processing, are all of those nutrients still intact? No, no, um, you know, the heating, the pressure, 
all that. I no, the, and he says that after studying it. It's easy for me to say it when I just think about it, but but like he studied it. And the reality is is that those nutrients still aren't intact. You may get some, but processing destroys those nutrients. Um, and so that's the second point with the puffs is that I feel like given the power of food, I mean, it's when we eat, we're fueling our body at a cellular level. Um, you know, what we put in our body is affecting our brain, how we think, our energy, how, you know, our muscles are growing, our bones are growing, um, all of that, how much we pay attention. Um, you know, our food, food is so powerful. And so every single opportunity that we have to feed our kids real whole food designed to fuel their body in such a beautiful way is great. But when we give them these processed foods, we're missing some of those opportunities. I don't know, but I think about that a lot and I really feel good when I've like given the kids like this really rich nutrient dense meal and they eat it all. It's like a really satisfying feeling. I'm like, yeah, I just boosted their body in a really big way. Um, so, you know, you miss some of those opportunities when we're giving more processed foods. Um, I'm just going to glance to see, cause I think I had, I felt like I had more to say on that. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of it. So it's like kind of changing the way we look at food and that, you know, processed foods is going to happen. Um, I choose to support like the smaller companies that do less processing that really focus on the ingredients that they put in their foods. Um, and that's, if I'm giving processed foods, that's what I'm giving inside our house from what I can control. Um, but we don't have a lot of processed foods in the house. And so if the kids are hungry, um, you know, and they do need a snack in between meals, they've got to go to the fridge, open it up, get some veggies, cut up the cucumbers, cut up an apple and eat it. The good thing with those is that they digest so quickly. So like it actually maybe like revs up your metabolism a little bit before a meal, maybe. Um, and, 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 and it, not to mention there's so many good vitamins and nutrients in it. Um, I just want to pause for a sec cause I want to, I feel like I want to just make sure I've, I've said everything that I want to say in regards to that. Um, actually I do remember, I want to talk about, so the foods also, I feel like while I'm on, I might as well just like share about natural flavors too. So Included in this processed food that the marketing tells us is great, um, but unfortunately, a lot of the good nutrients have been destroyed by the time you know your baby picks up that puff to put it in their mouth. But also in that is other things, and one of the biggest things that I'm trying my best to stay away from, and it's so hard because it's actually the fourth largest ingredient or most prevalent ingredient in food, and that's natural flavors. And it sounds so innocent, natural flavors. Um, but the reality is, is it's not, they're not real flavors or fake flavors. They come from natural sources, but it's not a real flavor. It's, it's made in a lab. If it's not organic, then it also has like synthetic solvents and stuff in there. And think about that for a second. Like there's actually these huge companies that make these natural flavors. So there's so much money that goes into these food scientists trying to create these flavors that taste better than real food. So just sit with that for a second, like, like better than real food. So if you give your kids the puffs, they're likely not going to want the blueberries and the snap peas and the carrots and the sweet potatoes. They're going to want like this unreal flavor that they can only get in foods with these fake flavors. So that's the other thing. It's not about just like the food, but what's in it. And so you see not all, uh, but you see a lot of these like natural flavors in these puffs and these early, um, these processed foods for, for kids when they're young. And I think that too is really like messing up their taste buds. And that's why we see a lot of kids that like I hear all the time, every day, like, my kids don't eat their veggies anymore. And I have to believe that it's like these flavors because why would they eat these? Why would they eat their veggies? Why would they eat anything real when they can have a fake flavor that tastes better than real food? So that just makes me mad. Those, I really am like, <laughs> if I sit and think about it, big food just fires me up. 
because they're like, they don't care. They, I think they have to know, right? The harm of this. They have to know. That's their goal is to get your kids addicted. But yet they do it and it works. And now we have like obesity rates in children that are higher than it's ever been. I mean, where's the accountability? But that's a whole other, it's a whole other tangent that I can go off of, go off on. Um, so that would be the second reason is that, okay, number one, all the stuff that they claim is on the marketing of the puffs aren't, it's not really there. By the time you get it, so much of that nutrition is gone due to the processing. And number two, all the extra stuff that they put inside it and especially the natural flavors. And so I think these puffs, while they seem so innocent and so convenient and um, they're so prevalent, they're really like hurting our kids uh, long-term and their relationships with food. So I think that's all what I will say. Maybe as I go through these questions here, like more things will kind of jog my memory, but I think that's it. I mean, I think those are the two big reasons why we stay away from puffs. And the other thing I'll say is this, um, I wonder, I often wonder because I get a lot of, a, a lot of questions around, okay, so now my kids won't eat veggies. What do I do? I'm not in that situation. I'm super grateful for that. Um, and I totally empathize with you. Like I can't admit, I know that like all the satisfaction I get when my kids eat like a really nutrient dense meal. And so if they're not eating that, I feel like, I don't know. I, I'm so sorry. I empathize completely with you. It's the struggle. I'm sorry. I wonder, and I don't know, I'm not an expert here. I've not been in that situation, but I do know this. Um, my pediatrician has told me, you know, multiple times and I see it for myself too. It's like, if your kid, you know, there are days when your kid's appetites are higher and then they're less, but the reality is that if they end up skipping a meal or like they just have a banana for dinner, they're gonna be fine. Um, you know, as long as they're getting like fluids. So I just wonder if it's like, maybe, and, and, and I apologize if this is so naive on my part and you just wanna be like, shut up, you have no idea what you're talking about. I wonder if it's just like, you just, you, you stop right? You just like, there's going to be no more puffs. And instead you just give real food and maybe the first, second and third meal, they just like, don't eat that much. Maybe they just eat like a piece of fruit or cheese or, you know, what I, I don't know. I don't know. But then after a while, it's like they get hungry. And so then they're going to have to eat it. And, and I think I could be just like throwing up in my mouth, just spewing stuff. But I feel like I've read somewhere that it's like seven days to, to recalibrate your taste buds. I'm almost positive Michael Garan from Sugar Proof, that, that's another amazing read, um, said something around that. It's like seven days to recalibrate your taste buds. And, um, and then they start to like, kind of like get those taste buds back and um, can taste real food and can appreciate it. So I'll just throw that out there. That's a big question I've been asked and may not, it's probably not as simple as that, but it's just maybe something to think about. Um, now I think that's all that I wanted to say. So I'm just going to scroll through oops, the comments and just see, can you give examples of foods that is used with seed oils? Um, gosh, I would say like anything in the grocery store that's in the middle aisles, that's not on the perimeter. Anything is like probably has seed oils and like, that applies for all the fancy stores too, like like Whole Foods and definitely Trader Joe's, unfortunately. So I would say most processed food has seed oils in it. There's seven seed oils. Um, there's some of the obvious, but even things that aren't as obvious, like the grape seed oil, sunflower oil, saffron oil, those are all included in the seed oil group. And then you have like corn, canola, soy, vegetables, usually a combination of those. Um, I know I'm missing a couple. We have a lot of this on our website. So if you go to hashtag bye bye seed oils, you'll find like everything you want and more on seed oils. We like really went all out that month, but there's so much to say on it. So um, yeah, the, the best thing to do is just turn the, turn whatever you're buying, turn it over, look for the ingredients, read through them. And if you see those oils, it's a seed oil and um, I'm just gonna throw it out there. You're gonna find it in almost 
everything. That's the cool thing too. Like if you just do one thing and you eliminate seed oils, by default, you're eliminating so much because it's in almost all the processed foods. So like by default, you're gonna eliminate a lot of processed foods. So if there's like one health goal, it's like instead of being gluten-free, just be like seed oil free, which, hold on one second, I, I have to do this. Um, how cool are these? All the profits from these stickers, we just launched them. All the profits from these stickers go back to low-income families and go back to the schools. So here's this. And then if you want to really like teach your kids about superhero foods, you can buy our book, My Superhero Foods. Um, it's right, see it right there, up there. But you can find it in the link in our bio. And if you use the word avocado, the promo code avocado, you can get a free sticker. We have these and we have these little avocado cuties. <laughs> um, they look so cool on water bottles and stuff. Anyways, it's a little bit of a tangent, but um, yeah, that's where you're gonna find seed oils in a lot of stuff. Um, let's see, she's talking about baby toddler snacks. Yes, you do, 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 do. I love it, thank you guys. It's so nice to see you all on here. It's amazing, but so difficult. Yeah, it's amazing, but so, it's so hard. It's so hard. So uh, I do think it takes prep and it also, it probably comes at the expense of some other things. Um, but if, if you make it a priority, then I think that's what it has to be. It's just, you have to decide this is a priority and, um, and then you go all in. And I'm telling you, the results are worth it. The results are worth it. There's been so many, um, I've gotten so many messages of this, like the randomest things, like I've cut out seed oil and my eczema cleared up. Um, I have so much more energy, just like so many amazing things, just like seed oils alone. I don't want this to turn into seed oils, but it is in most puffs, so I think it's pretty relevant. Um, so it's hard, but it's worth it. And the other thing I'll say is that, um, check out, I'm right after this, I'm gonna post, actually, let me back up, in our feed, because I, I know a lot of people are gonna watch this after the fact, in our feed, we have um, stuff on puffs and um, we posted that, what's the date? The 20th, we posted that on July 20th. So go kind of around there. And in that post on puffs, the third slide gives like, I think nine, just a bunch of different ideas of whole foods that are really easy, like blueberries instead of puffs. Uh, it may require you to, you know, like carry around a cooler or something, but just that when you're at home, like blueberries instead of puffs. And we give lots of examples too. Um, of just like easy, easy finger foods instead of the puffs. Um, so it's hard, I hear you, but totally worth it for you and your kid. Okay, so many things is I never cook. I suck at making dinner. Yeah, you don't. Okay, so somebody just said, you know, their kid eats healthy, but they don't. So, you know, one of the best things we could do is model, right? I think um, it's just, it's easy, like the third while she's a handful, um, and I think that's like saying it lightly. <laughs> she's a darn handful. Thankfully, I'm so grateful she's a good eater. And I think it's just because like everyone around her is eating healthy food and she just sees like, this is what we eat. And so, um, yeah, I think modeling is a big one. Uh, okay. So I think I've gotten through most of the comments. Thank you guys for being on. Thank you for your comments. And, um, if you're catching this post live, um, you know, I'll, I'll keep on checking back on the comments. So if you have questions, if you want to share, uh, let me know and I will do my absolute best to answer them. I'm going to try to like get on and do some more lives. This I thought would be like 10 minutes and I don't even know. I think it's been over a half an hour. <laughs> um, so I hope it's been helpful. I'd love any feedback too, like especially the critical feedback. It's like you're rambling or whatever. Uh, that's really helpful. So uh, I wish you guys all an amazing day and um, I hope that I've challenged your thinking around the baby puffs and I would love to just hear about anything in regards to it. If it worked, if it didn't, tips, tricks, because we're all a community, we're all trying to get better together, myself included, and um, I think that's the best way is just sharing sharing all this information. So, all right guys, uh, hope you all have a great day. I will talk to you later. I just have to figure out how to stop this. I think I just exit out. Bye.
and